In this video, we'll see how passwords are really cracked. Passwords are not saved as plain texts. Any website of this age on the internet uses a hashing algorithm to encrypt and manage passwords. There are many types of hashing algorithms like the SHA1, MD5, etc. As an example for this video, let's consider Facebook. In order to log into your Facebook account, you enter your email and password and click on login. The first time you create a Facebook account, you are asked to fill in a form like this, which contains your name, your email address and it asks you to choose a password, your birth date and your gender. Once you click on sign up, this data is sent to the Facebook's backend database. In the Facebook's database, your name, your gender, your age and your email or phone is saved as it is. But what about the password? As I told you, a password will never be saved as a plain text in a website's database. So this password is given as input to a hashing algorithm and the output given by this hashing algorithm is the encrypted form of the password which appears to be random but is not. This hashed password is saved in the Facebook's database but not the plain text. Which means the password which you entered will never be saved on Facebook's database as a plain text. Instead, only it's encrypted or in other words the hashed password is saved in the Facebook's database. Now suppose Facebook had a data breach and hackers managed to gain access to Facebook's user info which included their name, age, gender, email and password. Though hackers have this information, they will not be able to log into any specific user account because the password is encrypted. If the hacker tries to log into any specific user account with the hashed password, he will not be provided access. He only needs to enter the password which is in the plain text form. So what do the hacker do now? Intuitively, the only possible way is to reverse the hash into its plain text form. But this is highly impossible because a hash is a one-way function and the plain text form of a hash cannot be obtained from the hash itself. That is how hashing algorithms are designed. So what now? This is when the strength of the password comes into the play. If you are using a common password like test123456, which I used earlier to sign up for Facebook, then the hacker will easily able to know the plain text form of your password from the hash string. There is something known as rainbow tables. These rainbow tables contain the password hashes of numerous commonly used passwords along with their plain text forms. So the hacker will be able to do a simple search with the password hash that he has and if the password hash exists in the rainbow table, that means that the password is successfully cracked and we now have the password in a plain text form. Remember that rainbow tables contain the password hashes of only the passwords which are commonly used. As a reference, you can try it yourself at crackstation.net. But what if the password is not a commonly used password? In that case, rainbow tables are of no use. So there comes dictionary attack and brute force attack. Both are quite similar. In dictionary attack, you have a word list. A word list is nothing but a huge text file with loads of passwords. In this attack, the hacker writes a code which compares the password hash to be cracked with the password hash of each and every password that exists in the word list file. If any hashes match, then it means that the cracking is successful and we now have the plain text of the hashed password. Now this attack can be target specific as well, which means you can actually create your own word list targeting a specific individual provided that you know some basic details about him and assuming that he used his basic details to frame his password. This attack can be a success or a failure based on the quality of the word list that you are using. In a brute force attack, each and every combination of letters, symbols and numbers are converted into their hash forms and are then compared with the password hash which is to be cracked. In other words, you are literally taking every possible password that can exist, convert it into its hash and check if the hashes match. So yes, it literally takes forever to crack a strong password using this method. However, if the computer's processing speed is fast enough, then yep, simple passwords can be cracked easily by this method. A new technique called salting is introduced by security analysts to give hackers a hard time in cracking passwords. In this technique, a specific combination of characters are inserted at specific positions of the plain text password before hashing. Every company has its own salting algorithm and they don't make their salting algorithm public. For example, let's say Facebook's salting algorithm inserts a string f% 2p at the beginning 
after the third character and at the end of the plain text password. After salting the password, the salted password is then hashed by a hashing algorithm. So, when a salt is used, rainbow tables are of no use, even if the password to be cracked is a weak and commonly used password. Because the hash of the password without salting do not match the hash of the password which is salted. Also, brute force attack and dictionary attack are not effective to crack salted passwords unless the hacker already knows the salting algorithm employed by a company. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like this video and also don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos. Comment down below if you have any doubts regarding this video.